So we're talking about brand potency or reigniting an entire category or industry. And um, they are different, but they have similarities. And, and much of what Brett was talking about was delivery systems. And, and we're going to talk about going back um, a stage. Reigniting uh, an industry and serving as a catalyst uh, for industry change. And a catalyst that builds awareness and consideration and category value. And of all of those things, I have to say that, that the more I thought about credit unions, the more we had conversations. I was here on Monday for a while. It's this idea of consideration, especially as you think about what I'm going to call new customers, not new members, uh, new customers. That we need to be, we need to get these folks uh, thinking that credit unions are in the consideration set. They're in the set of, of organizations uh, versus banks that they're willing to consider working with. So, but I need your help. Um, I need your help in at least three ways. I need you to think, and by the way, th this chart was done before I knew what the conference name was, so I didn't, I didn't just adapt it. I need for you to think as we talk for the next half hour, 45 minutes. I need for you to ideate, which I don't think is a real word, but you know what I mean. And, and I need for you to apply it uh, in two ways. One, to your own businesses, your own brands, and then two, to the category more broadly. So uh, think, ideate, and apply. Okay. In, that, in this context, Got Milk becomes our vehicle, not the destination. Okay, so we're going to see a lot of Got Milk advertising. It's going to be, actually, it's, it's interesting. There's no social media on, on this presentation. Um, so a lot of 30-second advertising. But that's not where we land. Got Milk is the vehicle to talk about category marketing and to talk about credit unions. So the first thing I'd like to say is found the brand. And, and it's a little bit like, or category, it's a little bit like building a house. Um, it's fun to look at the shutters. It's fun to talk about the color paint you're going you're gonna to paint the exterior of the house. It's fun to talk about appliances, but you really got to work on the foundation. <laughs> if the foundation isn't in place, then, then nothing works after that. And so let's go back to 1993. Let's go back to 1993. Okay, there was um, one global strategy for milk all around the world. And we took a look, um, at the Milk Processor Board was formed in 93. Um, we looked all around the world and there was advertising and marketing for milk in the UK, in Australia, in Germany, in Denmark, uh, the United States, of course, California had a big campaign. And would anybody like to just tell me right offhand, what was the one global strategy? Milk is good for you. Thank you. So there was one global strategy which was good for you. And, and it was said in different languages. It was, said, it was said in different forms. It could have been delivered in social media if we had it back then, but it was one strategy. There was a problem with that, is that 96, 97 percent of the people believed it already. They believed it deeply that milk was good for them, okay? And then they would say, I'd like a Gatorade, right? So you would say, isn't milk? Yes, milk is really good for you. I want a Snapple. Or eventually, I want a bottled water, or I want a Diet Coke, or I want a Coke Zero. So it was, it was fine. It was, the, the message was embedded, but people weren't changing behavior in the right direction. They were changing behavior by asking for Snapple. So we looked at that, and we said, well, you know, I guess we could make it 97%. But is that what we really want to do? So. The data was there. We took a look at the information and the data. And, and if you can remember back to milk advertising, most of it, when it talks about good for you, it's positioned as a standalone beverage, right? So that you have this glass of milk. I think everybody's seen it, right? With the little drips coming down the side. It's all crystalline. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And it's standalone. The problem is that's not the way people drink milk. It's not the way people drink milk. That's how people drink milk, <laughs> right? Well over 90% of all milk was consumed with food. And the milk industry was positioning it as a medicine, right? Standalone drink it. It's not the way it's consumed. So we said, whoa, that's pretty interesting. Milk and food, hmm, seems profound to me. So I had this thought and went to a, a marvelous agency, by the way, who gets 90% of the credit for everything you're going to see. 
uh, called Goodby Silverstein and Partners in San Francisco. And I said, hey, we've got this incredible strategy. It's food and milk. And there was this kind of long silence. And they said, yeah, I guess it kind of sounds like a food and milk yum yum strategy. And they did some work and they did some consumer research, which you're going to see, I'm going to push you very hard toward doing consumer research. And they said, you're kind of half right. And what they did was, in their own offices, they, they um, had lots of refrigerators, a big agency, and they, they cut a hole in the back of the refrigerator and they put a video cam in there. And then they took everybody's milk, because people had lots of cartons of milk in the fridge because they had peanut butter sandwiches and cookies and cereal, and they took all the milk away. And so people in the agency would come up at six o'clock at night, they're working late, they'd open the refrigerator door, they would get, they'd have their box of cereal in their hand, maybe a banana, and they would reach in and they would start to look for the milk, and there was no milk. And they went nuts. They went absolutely crazy. And so what they did was they took this yum yum strategy and they took the milk away. So they gave people the food. We gave people the food. We said, here's the food that you love, the Oreo cookies. Put it in your mouth, start chewing on it, and now we're going to take that milk away. We're going to take it away from you. So that was the, those are the origins of the deprivation strategy. So that, that's a way of expressing it. And the way of expressing it is this entire brand, this entire brand was based on how it sounds when you pour milk in the bowl, right? Snap, crackle, and pop. The entire brand. What I want to say, and I want to bring it back to credit unions, is because you could, you could say, what does that have to do with us? Founding the brand, founding the, 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 the story of credit unions is incredibly important. Finding that point of distinction, finding the equivalent of milk deprivation, if you would, is incredibly important. Before one races off and says, how are we going to express it? Are we going to use social media or digital media or television or print? Those are all very good questions, but they have to come after you found the brand. Okay. My point of view on strategy or, or this, this founding part is it has to be competitive, it has to be proprietary, it has to be potent, it has to be pliable so that you can express it different ways, it has to be sustainable, all of those things. But most importantly, folks, it has to be true. It has to be true. We didn't invent milk deprivation. All we did is unearth it. All we did is find out about it by talking to people who consumed, bought and consumed milk. We found out about milk deprivation. So as you think about a category strategy, it has to be all of these things, but it has to be true. It has to be true. One of the things that I learned uh, from this agency and the experience of, of Got Milk was the, that it, it's a worshiping of ideas. And, and I think, um, actually, Sir Ken might have said this uh, on Monday. He said, the world's changing because of ideas. Because of ideas. Brett's comments are all idea-based comments. He's creating a new bank based on ideas. And um, it, it really is true. It is all about ideas. So